Hi, my name is Miko Silver. I'm at BMW of San Francisco, and I wanted to do a quick video with the explanation about, in general, about leasing. And uh, this is a, a, a frequently asked question, what happens if you're in a lease and you need to get out of the lease? There's a contract, are you going to be penalized? Somehow, how much is gonna cost you? Why would you not just buy the car so it would be easier to sell it later? So we're gonna talk about that. So uh, we're gonna take a hypothetical scenario of a car. So we're taking a car that's manufacturer suggested price is $40,000. The bank, which basically is going to buy the car from the manufacturer or from the dealer, and they will lease it to you, or they're gonna rent it to you. So the bank is gonna estimate how much will the car be worth at the end of the lease, what they say, what they call the residual value or lease and value. So in this scenario, we're gonna say, we're gonna assume it's 50%. 50 uh, 50%. So they always calculate it all MSRP, not of the selling price, because no matter how much you sell, how much you paid for the car, even if you got the car for free, it's still gonna be worth something based on the market. So of $40,000, 50%, residual value will be $20,000, which means that at the end of the lease, if after everything you paid and you still wanna buy the car, this is guaranteed to you. When people say, well, I don't have anything built into the car, I made all those payments, yeah, you do have something. You don't have to buy the car at the end of the lease for 40,000. You buy it for what you didn't pay. And uh, let's say in this scenario, you've got a rebate, you got a little bit of discount, and the selling price of the car is 38,000. So uh, what you're gonna pay during the lease is the, basically it's the depreciation. From 38,000 to 20, it's $18,000. The bank is going to divide it into even numbers, even number, basically your payments, and they're gonna add a little bit of interest, what they call the money factor or the rent charge. That's how much gonna be how they're gonna make their money, and also they're gonna charge, usually they charge a bank fee and the inception or what they call the acquisition fee. Again, this is how the bank makes the money because the bank is separate legal entity from the manufacturer, it's pretty much the their own business. They're always connected, but it's, it's, it stands on its own. So again, we have selling price, 38. We have the residual, let's say your payment, I don't know, it's $400 per month, really doesn't matter. You're going through a certain amount of time and um, something happens and you need to end the lease. So there could be a few scenarios. One scenario could be, you need to end the lease because you just decided you really like the car, you don't wanna make payments, you won the lottery, you have the money, you just wanna pay it off. So let's say a one year pass, you're right here, and uh, you made third of your payments so of $18,000, you paid 6,000, so you still have $12,000 plus the residual. And that's pretty much your payoff. They're gonna deduct the uh, interest, they're gonna charge you the extra interest if you paid off sooner, but they're still gonna charge you that much. So this is your, this is your payoff at that time, you can just write a check or you can finance it. You buy the car as a used car at this point. Um, registration through the state changes, all of that stuff. But from that now, you own the car. So that's easy. But let's say it gets more complicated. You don't just want to keep the car. You need to get rid of the car. You move into another country. You need a bigger car. You move to another place. You cannot park it anymore. Something happens. Or you're just ready for a new car. You really want a new car. You want to end this one and start over. So let's talk about a scenario that you're right here. You're two year mark and you just don't wanna, can't wait another year. So the payoff right here will be, you have another 6,000, you have $26,000 paid. The car depreciated, this is a linear progression in your payments because with each payment, it's pretty easy. The payment goes, the, the payoff goes down by that much. But the value of the car changes a little bit differently. It changes with the market. And usually depreciation hits the hardest at the first few months, then it kind of evens out, and then it might end up here, it might end up lower or higher, because the bank guesses that this is gonna be residual, the residual, they might be wrong. So let's say here the value dropped a few thousand dollars, and then it kind of started even out, and then you're still in the water here, but then it went over, and the car is actually worth more than the residual, a couple of thousand dollars. Let's say this, again, hypothetical scenario. And you're right here, you're right at two year mark, payoff is 26,000, you need to get out of the car. So um, you could transfer your lease. Then um, really the payoff doesn't matter, you just find someone that's interested in your car, is willing to pay the payments, somebody needs a short term lease, they don't wanna get a new one, that could be perfect. Um, the problem is to find that person, that's one. 
And two is that you need to make sure that your bank will actually, your lease institution will actually allow that because some leasing companies don't allow that at all and some uh, put some restrictions. For example, when I used to work with Volkswagen and Audi, they'll say, okay, you can transfer this lease to that person, but if that person stops making payments, we're gonna go in collections after him and after you as well. So if nobody makes payments, your credit's gonna get hit and it's gonna be a big problem for you. It's gonna cost you a lot of money. So you have to be careful on that. Plus, um, just finding that person again. There are companies that do that. There's the swap lease and a couple of others. You have to pay them a fee to find you someone. It costs money too, but it is possible. Now, let's say you don't wanna do that. You just wanna end the lease and just, just wanna get a over. Easiest thing, you come to a dealership, you have one car, you want another, could be the same brand, could be a different brand, and you tell them, get me out of this car, I don't want it anymore, they're gonna take it and trade. Same as if you own the car, same as if you financed it, doesn't matter. They can take the car and trade. The car is worth what it's worth, regardless of how it's financed or leased, and uh, they're gonna look at the market value, you're gonna look at if uh, how much will it be to end your out lease. So we know this. A two-year mark at 26,000. They're gonna look at the market, they're gonna appraise the car, and they're gonna say, okay, based on everything, we will pay for this car $23,000. So we have $3,000 difference, this is your negative equity. This is what you have to deal with. So let's say you just wanna get out of this car and you don't need a car anymore, or you move into another country. You sign off the car to the dealer, sign all the documents, write them a check for $3,000, and you're done with the lease. No more bills, no inspection, nothing. You walked away. If you do need another car, it could be rolled, the negative equity could be rolled in your new loan or new lease. Then they're basically gonna take the $3,000, add it to the new amount, spread it over your payments. It's gonna be pretty easy. If it's a long-term loan, you won't even feel it, so it is possible as well. Now, let's say, you just don't feel right. You don't wanna pay that $3,000. You don't think the dealers could pay you enough money, and usually they don't because they need to make money on the car. They need to process it. It's a big operation. So you can sell it privately. I've done this myself. You can sell it whether somebody buys it for cash or somebody could finance it as well. And um, again, just the issue is that you have to find that buyer that has enough money or has basically is able to pay for the car to pay it off for you. Um, so let's say you found the buyer is willing to pay $26,000. Let's say you don't need to finance it. Okay, easy enough. Uh, they're gonna go to credit union, to the bank. The easiest thing, you're gonna go with them to their bank with your ID. Hopefully you have the payoff information from your leasing company. And their bank is gonna process the loan, buy it out, uh, pay off your car, pay off your lease. You walk away, you get the documentation that's paid off, new owner takes the ownership, or if they leased it, I mean not leased it, but they, they could finance it. So that's possible. If somebody pays cash, I've done this myself, I just got the buyer to write me a cashier's check, and not even to me, I had them do a cashier's check directly to the leasing company. I send it over, sign off on the documents that I got from the website, and the new title, new registration was mailed directly to the new owner. Again, I walked away, gave them the keys, and I was done. As long as I knew that it's gonna get paid off, no problem. If you don't get all this money, let's say you got not 26,000, but 25,000 private sale, then you still need to come up with that extra thousand to pay it off, then you walk away after lease. So again, it's possible, it takes a little bit of work, but it, it could happen. Now, if it, to make it really easy, you just, you have a few months left, you don't wanna deal with this car anymore, you can turn in your lease sooner. There's no, again, there's never a penalty for anything, but you have a contractual obligations, either to pay the payoff, or if you turn in the car sooner to the bank, they will still charge you the remaining balance. They're not gonna charge you the payoff, because they're, they're getting the car, they're gonna charge you the remaining payments. So if you're paying $300 and you have six months left, they might charge you $1,800, might discount a little bit because there's less interest, they're still gonna inspect the car, they're gonna check the mileage, and they're gonna you know, bill you for that as well, but it's just easy. And what could happen, let's say, this is a good optimistic scenario, when your payoff is really close to the value, but what happened if the market really tanked and the car's worth actually 18,000? So um, in this case, 
it, again, it, w this scenario shows you that sometimes it makes sense to turn in the car rather than trade in the car because it's easier to pay 1800 price by yourself than tacking 1800 plus two plus 2000 3800 dollars to the new loan this just makes more sense all right um, lastly uh, what happens a lot is manufacturers like leasing because they can keep you as a customer they can keep selling cars so you can get another car all the time and you you kind of stay loyal to the brand it's a good source of income residual income for them so what they're going to do is uh, when you get start getting closer to the end of the lease all kinds of offers might pop up and usually we call it lease pull ahead. They won't say, okay, you have six months left on the, on the pay. What do you say, you get into a new car right now, don't have to wait until the end, and it's not gonna cost you anything. We're not gonna charge you this, we're not gonna charge you that, we're just gonna wipe off your payments. How many payments do you have? Four, five, six, we're just gonna wipe them off as long as you get into a new car. New car has to be leased, a loan, doesn't matter, but as long as you get a new car. So this way, they build loyalty, they keep you as a customer, it's easier for you to get into a new car, sometimes you've, like, you've already been thinking about a new car, so that just helps. It doesn't work if you, need a, if you want to get a different brand, it's just not going to work like that because they have no incentive on doing that. So um, basically these are your scenarios. So again, with the lease, it is possible to get out of the lease, it's fairly easy, it's not much more complicated than when you have a loan on the car. Uh, it is more complicated with, with than if you bought a car in cash. But when you buy a car in cash, $38,000, here in California, a $38,000 car will tax about $3,500 $3, in sales tax on the car. You have the car for a year or two years, that money is gone. On top of the depreciation, you lost $3,500, never gonna get it back. When you lease a car, again, in most states, you pay sales tax only on the monthly payment, not on the whole car. So you save something over there. Uh, another big um, advantage of the lease is what happens if the car gets damaged. If it's an ex expensive, high-end luxury car, $80,000 car, let's say, you drove it for a year, then you got into a small accident, but the accident went on the history of the car. Then anybody that looks at the car and tries to buy it, it's gonna get suspicious, and they might not just wanna buy a car with bad car effects, which is pretty understandable. So uh, it might make it hard for you to get out of the lease in, in, the, in the middle of the lease. But no matter what you get to the end, you just return the car, you're done with this. You don't have to deal with this, you're not gonna take the penalty. Again, there's no penalty if your car gets into an accident. As long as your insurance or you pay for proper repairs, the car looks good, it passes the inspection, no problem, you return the car, you're done. So well, that's about it. That's how easy it is to return the car, to turn in the lease. Thanks for watching.